sorry, before we look at some other examples, I really quickly wanted to mention these. These are discontinuous, but they're um, infinitely discontinuous because of the asymptotes. So coming from the right-hand side, coming from the left-hand side, discontinuous because the asymptote breaks them up. Both of these, left-hand and right-hand side, are, are discontinuous as well. What about this one? If I come from the left-hand side, is it continuous? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Because at 2, it, there's a solid dot. So all the way up to 2, it's continuous. After 2, it, like, it breaks right there, so we can't say the whole thing is continuous. Coming from the right-hand side, that's an infinite discontinuity. And then we have the oscillating one. We have to mention him. Okay, the oscillating one um, is discontinuous because when you get closer and closer to zero here, the line just starts jumping back and forth. It doesn't connect anymore. It just jumps. So um, how does this look when we come to guys like these? Well, this right here, uh, the basic laws of continuity, they're kind of the same as the basic laws of limits. All this is saying is you can break them up. If, if you know that F and G are continuous, then when you add them together, your result is still continuous. And the same thing when you subtract them or when you multiply by something or when you multiply them times each other, your result is still continuous. So if you multiply two continuous functions, the resulting function is continuous. That's all that's saying. So now we come to this stuff. If we know that sine of Y is continuous, we can um, take a little shortcut. We can just plug it in. That's your answer. What is sine of pi over 3? Uh, let's see. Sine of pi over 3 is uh, rad 3 over 2. Yeah? You guys remember that? Okay. So if this is continuous, then this is going to equal this. I just have to plug it in. And that equals rad 3 over 2. Okay, and that's what we've been trying to say all along. We're trying to say that if um, you're taking the limit of this function f of x and x is approaching c and it's continuous, if this is continuous, then you can just take that c and plug it in and you get your answer. And that's what we just did. We just took the c and we plugged it in and we got our answer. Can we do that over here? Well, the question you have to ask yourself is, is this continuous at negative 1? Well, you have to think about all these graphs. You have to think about the 3 to the x graph. What does that graph kind of look like? Is it discontinuous anywhere? Nope, it's not discontinuous anywhere. Then we have this radical on the bottom. Uh, do you guys know what the square root function looks like? Shift it over, it just looks like that. Is it discontinuous anywhere? No, there's no jump, but you definitely have numbers you can't plug in. Like, if I said for this one, what's the limit as we approach negative 7, which is right here? Uh, I would say it does not exist. The function doesn't even exist, exist right there. Um, and then we have this function right here. Is this one discontinuous? Yeah, yeah it's because of the, you can't have a 0 on the denominator. So if I can't have a 0 on the denominator right here, what can x not, e not equal? x can not equal negative 5. Uh, because then that would give me a 0. What else can x not equal? Are we allowed to have anything less than negative 5 right here? If I plug in a negative 6, what would I get? Yeah, if I plug in, um, I don't know, if I plug in a 2, I would get a negative 3 in there, right? Can I take the square root of negative 3? So we can't plug in anything less than 5, right? I think it's mean more than 5. It can't be negative 4. It can't be anything less than negative 5. Anything less than negative 5, right? Because then you get 0 on the denominator so much. Yeah. So yeah. It can't be negative 5. Parentheses negative 5. What? We can't get a negative on the bottom, and it can't equal 0. So it can't equal 5, and it can't equal anything less than negative 5? Because if you get negative 4, 5 minus 2 is 1. Yeah, I think negative 5 is equal to 1. Negative 5 minus, oh, because yeah. plus. I'm gonna, okay, you're right, you're right. <laughs> so, and actually, yeah, okay. So, what about if we're approaching negative 1? Is negative 1 safe? Yes. Yeah, it is. So, it's continuous at negative 1. 
It's, it's safe right here for this function. It's safe right here for this function. It's safe right here for this function. So that means because it's continuous at negative 1 on all these, I can just plug negative 1 in and get my answer. Wait, so you can do that? Okay, so um, I'm going to plug it in, 3 to the negative 1, and then we have negative 1 right here plus 5. Let's see what we get. We get um, 1 third on top. On the bottom, we get the square root of 4. Ooh, it's pretty. This is a 2. So we have 1 third divided by 2. You guys remember doing that? Back in like 5th grade when you did fractions? So you have 1 third divided by 2, which would be the same as multiplying it by 1. Yeah, there you go. All right, so that's the limit for that one. Wow, it looks so complicated. But when you break it down and you look in, at all these different functions right here that this is comprised of, because we can break this up, right? Using these basic laws right here, we can break it up, just like we did in the last section. Um, when we break it up, man, it's like, okay, these are all continuous. That means I could just plug negative 1 into this. But it has to be continuous at that point, at negative 1. At negative 1, we're continuous. We're good. At negative 1, we're continuous. We're good. At negative 1, we're continuous. We're good, so we can just plug it in. All right, what about this function? Have you guys ever seen this guy before? He's called different names. He's called the integer function. He's called the, the floor function. He's called the non-decimal function. I just made that one up. I like to write it like this back in my number theory days because that reminded me I floor it. Um, here, check it out. If I plugged in 2 to the floor function or to the integer function, I would get 2. If I plug in 2.1 into the integer function, I get 2. If I plug in 2.5 into the integer function, I get 2. If I plug in 2.7 to the integer function, I get 2. Okay, so you guys see what happens? Like, if there's a decimal, you just cut it off. Yeah, it looks like a step. Now, it gets weird, though, because, and this is why I like to think about the floor function, because if I step over into... Um, the decimals, like if I did 0 0.1, if I plug that in there, what do I get? Zero. If I do 0 0.5, what do I get? Okay, so those would give me zero. But what if I had negative 0 0.1? Negative 1. Negative 1. It floors it. It takes it down to the closest integer. Okay, you see, that's why I like the flooring function, because that makes sense to me logically. Now let's look at it graphically. It might, it might make even more sense when we graph it. Okay, so uh, let's see here. If I plugged in, wait, we did this, right? We plugged in 2 right here, and we got 2. We plugged in all these numbers right here, and we got 2, right? But when we plug in 3, what do we get? It jumps up to 3. And we plug in all the 3 decimals, and then we get nothing. Or when we plug in 4, what do we get? It jumps up to 4. And then we plug in all the four decimals, and then we plug in five, it jumps up to five. All right, you guys see what happens? So here, if I continue the trend here, it looks like this. Solid, open, solid, open, solid. So this is our step function. That's how that thing looks. It's kind of weird, huh? It's like discontinuous everywhere. There's jumps everywhere. Well, if I was approaching two from both the left and the right-hand side, look at that guy. If I approach it from the left-hand side, the limit would be one. If I approach it from the right-hand side, the limit would be 2. So does the limit exist? We would not be able to plug 2 in to this to get our answer because the limit does not exist. Now, if it said from the left or the right-hand side, it does. This at 2, it's continuous from the right-hand side, right? Because it's a solid dot. But that doesn't say from the right-hand side. It just says 2. So you have to know that it's... Um, undefined.